Good morning, uh, everyone here at the Ecclesia Christ, Harrisonburg, Virginia, meeting here in the Stone Spring Elementary School. Glad to have our friend and custodian, Richard Carper, who uh, uh, graciously uh, made an effort on a snowy and sleety morning. They're calling for a big uh, ice storm to come in here on this uh, wintry December 8th, 2013 morning. But we're here, uh, bright and bushy, and uh, my friend Rick Lum, who's with me as we're breaking open the Word of God, John Dowdy. And we're talking about what the Bible says about filling the void. Filling the void. You know, on, speaking of uh, filling our voids, you know, it's a cold and wintry morning, and uh, I'm thankful for our uh, uh, Virginia Department of Transportation man here in Harrisonburg. Don Camora is his name. And, He's from Youngstown, Ohio, and he knows a lot about uh, snow and removal and ice and preparation. I, when we were going up 81, the roads were just, uh, they were out all weekend. They don't put the salt down like they used to. They got these new uh, mechanisms, Rick, where they yeah. kind of squirt down these lines. Did you see that on the road? I haven't seen that yet. These uh, little uh, zebra stripes. I guess they squirt down that uh, whatever material it is. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, but uh, we drove down 81 this morning, and the truck was there. Uh, the plow truck was just uh, there. They're on every exit ramp, just waiting. And we're just so thankful. People are making an effort on Sunday morning to, to help us to get to the assembly. And we're just little things like that don't go unnoticed. We really appreciate that. But speaking of putting on and putting off, uh, you know, I think that when we bring a gift to God, we make an effort to be here. I think the Lord knows when we, you know, when it hurts, we go the extra mile to brave the elements, not to be foolhardy because we wouldn't any, want, want anyone to suffer. And, uh, but getting the, uh, uh, Pete Cherney gave us a great uh, meteorological report here. The, uh, he said if we can get out of here, it's going to hit at 1. If we can just get out of here at 12, 12, 15. Uh, 1230 max, we're going to make it by God's grace. But so many people today are, you know, trying to fill the void, trying to be happy, trying to have satisfaction in their life and fulfillment. And they're going, looking, I guess, like that old country music song, looking for love in all the wrong places. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, let's begin with a word of prayer. Let's start with a word of prayer, and then I'm going to turn the program over to you, Rick. And I know you got uh, some verses prepared uh, speaking about the voids that we fill. Great God and Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much for the assembly. We thank you as the people are coming in and uh, have a great love for you. Why do we do it? Lord, today could be the day that you return, God, and it could be the second coming. And Lord, we know that as the fire fell from heaven and, and lapped up the water around Elijah's sacrifice so that we know that even this cold and uh, icy uh, December morning, Lord, we know that, that we have to brave the elements, the water, and the ice, and the wind, God, but there's also another element, God, that fire, that none of us can brave, Lord. We've got to be prepared, and that's why we're here this morning. I pray you'll bless us as we break open your word and talk about the things that will help us to become better Christians. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. <clears throat> All right, like, like John was saying, you know, we're talking about... Um, what it, just what it is we uh, bring into our lives, um, things that we look forward to uh, make us happy, to give us satisfaction. And uh, we started that last week, and it's just continuing on in that. Um, I'd like to start off with reading from uh, 2 Corinthians 6, starting in verse 14, and then finishing up in uh, verse 1 of chapter 7. <clears throat> All right. Do not be bound together with unbelievers, for what partnership have righteousness and lawlessness, or what fellowship has light with darkness, or what harmony has Christ with Belial, or what has a believer in common with an unbeliever, or what agreement has the temple of God with idols, for we are, we are the temple of the living God, just as God said, I will dwell in them and walk among them. And I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Therefore, come out from their midst and be separate, says the Lord. And do not touch what is unclean, 
and I will welcome you. Be a father to you, and you shall be sons and daughters to me, says the Lord Almighty. Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from what from all defilement of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. <clears throat> and that's, um, you know, what we have to understand. You know, there's there's no duality. You know, we've talked about um, being double-minded, you know, and uh, trying to compromise the pleasures of the world um, with the righteousness of God. And, uh, you know, we're, unfortunately, you know, the, the right path is narrow, so there's not as many of us out there in the world that are, are walking the path and teaching the path and uh, trying to reinforce their children and their families and their friends in being able to distinguish, being armed with an ability to see, you know, what's the light and, and what's the dark. People are getting caught up in different degrees of shadow and, uh, and as soon as you start to compromise that little bit, you know, you, you let yourself get a little, you know, from the bright, you go to, you know, a little bit of shadow, then a little bit darker, then a little bit darker. Each time you you dim the light a little bit, you dim it a little bit more each, the next time. And, um, you know, we need to be armed with the Word as we do every Sunday um, and in Bible studies and in uh, any chance we can get together in fellowship and, and get that support of each other. You know, being able to, you know, listen to each other. He's listening to each other's dialogue. Um, you know, find out what people are into. What and, you know, hearing in yourself, comparing their words to your actions, and uh, also hearing, you know, where, you know, people might be letting in a little bit of that darkness, so that you can support each other. You know, we come to each other to, you know, confess our sins, or you know, just at least be supportive of each other, and. Um, you know what? What agreement does the temple of God have with idols? You know there there is no agreement. There is none. Um, and when we put more of ourselves into seeking pleasures outside of outside of God, then you know, like I said, we just keep pushing ourselves further and further into that darkness, putting ourselves slip backslide. Um, so we really need to uh, be able to distinguish. You know, we, Rick, we live in a world that if you were to read the newspaper, they would try to tell us that, well, there are no black and whites. Everything's relative. Have you noticed that? If you listen to the commentators or the talking head guys on TV, you know, we, how many times do you hear the world say there's no absolutes, there's no black and white? But when you read Paul or you read Jesus or Peter, it always seems to be a black or white. You've got uh, obedience or disobedience, righteousness, righteousness or wickedness. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I guess we got to, one of the things that, that, uh, that I take from this is that, you know, we've got to conform our mindset. You know, how do we perceive and how do we judge things in the, within the framework of right or wrong, you know, righteousness and wickedness. Uh, how about anyone here this morning? Uh, you know, do you ever have that uh, question before you as far as uh, what we're talking about here, the, the fellowship? Paul asked these rhetorical questions, and the answer is no. You know, what, what does uh, idols and the temple of God have in common? Mm -hmm. Well, appar apparently the Corinthian church, you know, must have been having temptations to get caught up in the world, right? Is there anybody here that wants to share anything? was asking, you know, well, in verse 14 of chapter 6 of 2 Corinthians, you know, don't be bound together with unbelievers. And so what is it that, that distinguishes a, a believer in the context of the scripture? And uh, being a believer isn't just saying, yes, I believe Christ was a, was a man, and uh, he lived uh, at the time that we call, you know, zero 
AD forward, you know. Um, you know, and you can even say that you believe he's the son of God. Um, but it's like when, when uh, Philip and the eunuch were talking, and uh, Philip taught him, and as, as it says in Scripture, Philip taught him Jesus, and he believed. And because he believed, it was more than just going, okay, yeah, I think you're telling the truth, you know. He, he said, you know, he believed. He says, well, you know, so um, if, no, if I believe, you know, and here is some water, what keeps me from being baptized? Nothing. They stopped it. He was baptized. So it means believing isn't just the acknowledgement of uh, his existence, but it's also the following of everything that he taught, everything that he said, everything that he asked of us, all the commandments, and, uh, and devoting our lives to that. That's what being a believer is. Mm-hmm. It's the difference between a fruit and a vegetable. You see these posters over here? I was really uh, amazed because, you know, I went to visit my botany professor. She's my neighbor. Oh, she was a hard teacher. And uh, one day I went, and I was just kind of laughing, and I said, is a tomato a fruit or a vegetable? And, oh, was she furious because, you know, obviously the fruit comes from the reproductive system. The fruit of a plant is equal to, you know, a mom having a baby. Mm -hmm. And she was upset with me for not understanding that, you know, the the botanical side of things. And so the answer was is that it comes from the ovary, so a tomato is a fruit. Well, the vegetable is the stalk, the root, you know, uh, the leaf, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God, Romans 10, 17. You know, I'm wondering today how many, how many people out here, you know, we want to be fruits. We don't want to be vegetables, right? We got, we got to bear fruit. Right. And the way that we're fruitful is we got to be in the Word of God. The way that a person's saved is by hearing the Word of God. So apparently we might have fruits, Randy, and we might have some vegetables with God. So we don't want to be vegetables, do we? Spiritually or uh, figuratively. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because if, if you believe and you understand, then uh, then you know what's at stake. You know that you to not fulfill all the commandments uh, and to strive in spirit and mind to to fight against the flesh and to fight against the temptations. Um, so yeah, belief is more than just acknowledgement, but it's it's action for God, action taking action in in the Word. Yeah. Well, even the demons believe. We know that James says, you know, faith is, faith alone is not enough mm-hmm. because the demons believe and they tremble. So we don't want to tremble. All right, well, what else do we have here? Uh, so we gotta we got to clean our house, don't we? we got to put away idols. Why would John tell us, you know, in his, his last epistle, stay away from idols? Paul tells us stay away from idols. Uh, they wouldn't concentrate so much on that if it weren't such a, a great temptation. Right. And we all, you know, it's hard to, you know, uh, you know, uh, the Washington Redskins, you know, move, we, we came from up in the Ohio, Pennsylvania area. We had a lot of Steelers fans, but moving here to, well, we were in Winchester at the time, and, you know, there were people that would come to the assembly, they'd take the Lord's Supper and then jump in their car and drive over to, well, in those days it was RFK Stadium, you know, mm-hmm. downtown, and, you know, uh, it almost got to the point where, you know, in the fourth quarter, Joe Gibbs, you know, the, he's always settling for that last field goal. They would all, all the games would come down to that last field goal, and here's Joe Gibbs on the sideline, turning down, kneeling down, and praying. He was praying, and the camera would zoom in. And uh, I wondered if, you know, the Church of Christ preacher wasn't praying that the Redskins would lose because, you know, the, the Church of Christ preacher is praying that, that they'll miss the kick because all the church members are skipped out of the assembly and at an RFK field. So how is God going to judge that, you know? Mm-hmm. you got you got a guy that says he's a believer praying that they're going to make the kick, and then they got... But uh, 
the Lord up in heaven, you know, he sees all of these things. Uh, you know, wouldn't it be embarrassing when Christ comes back to be at RFK instead of the around the table, the Lord's table? Uh, it's a fearful thing to fall in the hands of the living God. And, and uh, I don't know if uh, what your next point was going to be, but I know that we've been studying in Luke chapter 21. And one of the things that uh, just really puts the, a good fear in me. In Luke 21, and this is the verse that kind of kicked off our... Uh, it stimulated us to study this subject about, being, about what we try to fill ourselves with, to fill our void. And Jesus says in Luke 21, 34, Take heed to yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, and the cares of this life. And that day come on you unexpectedly, for it will come as a snare on all those who dwell on the face of the whole earth. Kind of like that mouse that, you know, got into our mouse trap. Mm-hmm. You know, he's looking at that. Who ever thought of putting cheese? I never had success putting cheese. We put peanut butter. Yeah, that always works. Yeah, the peanut butter. And that mouse just goes crazy. And sure enough, you know, he's, he's tempted in the allure, and he doesn't know it's a trap. Mm-hmm. And that trap sprung. I don't, I don't know if they had mouse traps in the Bible days. I know they, they, they had rodents. I'm sure they did, right? They've been around from creation. Right. But I, I wonder what kind of snares. They had snares. They had traps. They could uh, trap animals and things like that. But can you imagine the whole world being caught in the trap of the second coming of, of the Lord Jesus Christ? The whole earth is going to come as a snare on all those who dwell on the face of the whole earth. And that would include us, I suppose. But he says in verse 36, Watch therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass. And then listen to this. And to stand before the Son of Man. Are we able to stand before the Son of Man? That's got to be a fearful thing, to stand before the Son of Man. Brother Rick. <clears throat> yeah, and uh, let's turn to Romans twelve two. Romans twelve two. Yeah, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what you what the will of God is, that which, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. That, uh, like we were saying, that, you know, and the idols and being conformed to the world, um, and it's like that, like that mouse sees just the peanut butter, knows that it smells good, knows it's going to taste good. Um, you know, it's, it's not able to distinguish, you know, a, a box of donuts from the framework of a mousetrap and uh, that's what the word of God gives us it gives us the ability to distinguish studying the word of God coming and fellowshipping and uh, becoming armed with the word gives us that ability to distinguish you know what's the you know the peanut butter jar versus the peanut butter trap the um, you know what's the good and what's what's going to lead us to death um, if we don't have that ability to distinguish you know this uh, wonderful living word. If if, uh, if we don't know that, if we don't know what is the will of God, what is right in His eyes, then anything else we do is going to be that bar slamming down on our on our necks, killing us and trapping us. And that's where we don't want to end up. Mm. Look at these <laughs> words here in verse two, Romans twelve two, and that's a great text, uh, Rick. There's no question. That's that would be worth braving the elements just to come and. Come together and uh, just to analyze that uh, one verse right there, Romans 12, 2. Be not conformed, but be transformed. You know, that, isn't that what we're trying to do today? Isn't that really a, uh, a statement of what our congregation, what the Lord's trying to do, what our congregation is trying to do? Not be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Uh, I had some company this morning. You know, uh, and uh, you know that's the worst time for me to ha- to receive company is you know around nine o'clock on Sunday morning 
8.39, we're trying to get everybody ready, but uh, I thought, no, I'm going to just take some time here if I can. And, but uh, uh, one of our friends, the father, came. We had a boy stay with us, and uh, he came. I thought maybe he might come to the fellowship with us, which you know would have been nice, but his father came early in the Jeep to pick him up. But he's a truck driver. He drives a tractor trailer. And he was uh, he got in an accident last week on the interstate, and uh, you'll never guess what happened. He showed me uh, pictures of his tractor. Uh, here he was hit from behind by somebody going 75 miles an hour, and it wow. broke the steel frame of the trailer. Wow! And uh, the, the car spun around, and uh, they were hurt. They were in critical condition. Now, come to find out. Uh, it was a young couple, and the, the, they were in their 20s, mid-20s. Uh, the lady was driving, and her husband uh, was in the passenger seat. It was the husband that was hurt. They had been drinking, and they had been up on the East Coast uh, gambling, gambling and drinking. And uh, what happened was when they tried to help these, uh, this uh, husband of this couple, he was uh, wearing nothing but his boxer shorts. And what the information was that the people who were working on him, this poor uh, couple, they had gambled everything that they had away. The last thing they gambled was the suit of clothing that he wore. Now, we're talking about filling our voids. I mean, you've got to be pretty hooked. You know, I, I go hard on the lottery, and somebody says, John, you know, aren't you going a little hard on the lottery, uh, preaching against it? What if it's just, you know, people that, uh, you know, they're rich, and they, you know, and it's, they don't have cute little kids with bare feet. What if they're just doing it for the fun of it? All right? Now, I can't find a Bible verse that says don't play the lottery, but I, I found a couple Proverbs that might, you know, it would, it would involve a deduction. I'll be honest. You, it, you know, you have to make a deduction. The fool and his money are easily parted, things mm -hmm. like that. I, I, I don't want people to be fools. But if somebody wants to play the lottery, I mean, I, I'm not their judge. I, I'm not going to know. You know, if somebody wants to do that. But can you imagine? And, and I know how the devil works. He always starts out with that little, you know, that, just, just that one beer, you know, that mm -hmm. one drink, that one scratch. Yep. And, uh, <laughs> and you know, I, I think I know the way the devil works you actually win he'll he'll let you win at first the god is the god the devil is the god of chance you know the greeks we were in greece we saw the this marble statue with this ugly looking uh, kind of a baby and it was a god and they had chaos the greek chi which is an x mm -hmm. iota omicron sigma chaos i knew right away who it was chaos is the god of chance now what english word do we get from chaos <laughs> Chaos. chaos. Yeah, it's like chaos is randomness. It's luck. It's luck. It'd be like, you know, a lucky charm, a lucky clover. Good luck. You think the Lord likes is in that? If you if you have a pagan if the Greeks have a pagan god named Chaos, and it's, you know, good luck. We live we don't live under luck, do we? Do you live under luck? We lo live under the, the blessing of God. Mm hmm the blessing of God is the greatest fortune that you can that you can wish. And this guy must really have been hooked. Can you imagine the spiritual, the longing in that soul? And you know, I mean, I, I presume they were married. I mean, uh, the guy's wife should have at least, you know, the Bible said that God created a woman to help the man was lonely, right? right. So in a, in a way, marriage is a godly way to fill a void, right. the void of loneliness, the void of, uh, of companionship or lack thereof. But can you imagine gambling, throwing out your last suit jacket? The, the, your, the clothes on your back. The clothes on your back. It, maybe it was a two or $300 suit. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe it was something like you'd buy over here at Belk or the men's store. Anyway, it was a true story. And, uh, you know, how, how much is our congregation worth? How much is the Lord worth? How much is our godly family worth? How much is the congregation worth? 
when we have our fellowships, when we come together, the friendships that we have in Christ Jesus, how much is that worth? We have people that would... It's infinite. <laughs> people, we were broke down on 81. Guy got a babysitter. His wife and him jumped up, and their SUV drove all the way up to Pennsylvania to pick us up. Mm-hmm. There's, 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 there's no price you can put on a fellowship of Christians. And other than, you know, the only thing better than that is, you know, being able to be in the presence of Christ. That's right. I mean, that's just, uh, that's just uh, spiritual friendship, spiritual fellowship. But what about our salvation? What about the Lord? What does the Lord do for us? Does he lift us up? Does he fill that longing? You know, Jesus said, I came that you might have life and have it abundantly. We were reading that in John 8. I've been studying the Gospel of John. I came that you might have the abundant, the rich life. And I'm wondering, you know, do we, is life rich to us? Do we, do we really feel, are we really tapping into the wealthy life, the rich, the abundant life? Abundant. I'll have to say, sometimes I don't measure up, Rick, mm-hmm. you know, because life can get us down. You know, the Bible does talk about you know, being anxious and being depressed, but not to let yourself dwell there and stay there and get trapped there. Um, you know, we're talking about filling the void, and um, you know, we need to think about and train ourselves and become uh, educated and hear the Word of God and know what that abundance is. You know, we get raised up in the world, we get, you know, sort of um, used to those things that the world can give us, you know. God gave us adrenaline in our bodies to help us with fight or flight, you know, when we're in danger. But, you know, we turn that into a, a drug, you know. And uh, We had some adrenaline just, you know, driving on the ice this morning. It mm-hmm. gives you a little adrenaline charge, doesn't it? Uh, you know, God, God made it within us, you know, to receive that type of pleasure or that energized feeling that, uh, you know, for a purpose um, and not as a replacement for him. Right. Um, and, and we get, the, you know, we start becoming attached to that feeling and right. we leave God out of it. Right. And, and we skip Sunday morning to get the rush of, you know, doing something to get that feeling. And we turn our, away from the knowledge and the feeling of knowing that relationship with God so that we can get these other feelings. You know, a lot of the drugs people take are to give us that same either endorphin rush or the adrenaline rush. Mm-hmm. That's what they're looking for. You know, okay. we're turning this creation, that this, this temple that God gave us, we're turning it into a, a, you know, an entertainment zone using those right. stimulants or right. depressants That's or a good point. feelings like that and, and turn, turning away from what God wanted us to do with these these vessels of our spirit, this temple, and what it's capable of. Um, well, that brings me to my Ephesians passage, Rick. Okay. Uh, what do you, what do you, you want to go over to the, uh, we'll conclude here. I know we're, we're, uh, we're out of time. But it just talks about, you know, be filled with the spirit. In Ephesians 5.18, do not be drunk with wine, in which is dissipation or excess, but be filled with the, with the spirit. You know, we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And... I think it takes a conscious effort. I like the end of the Romans 12 too. It says, prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Every, every hour, every moment, really, is we make decisions, don't we? We make des- decisions when we talk to people, what we should say. Uh, we were on the east side yesterday, and it was early in the morning, and uh, we had some time, and it was just like, let's go make a call. We're just on this side of town. Let's make a call. It was the best thing we did. Mm-hmm. Just, uh, you know, we're proving God, proving what is the good and acceptable, perfect will of God. What does that mean, that you've got to prove what is that will? You've got to prove. Anybody, anybody have an idea? 
prove what is that perfect will, perfect and acceptable will of God? What does it mean when the Bible says you've got to prove things? You've got to prove them. Well, in Philippians 2.12, it says you've got to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Some things you just got to work out, don't you? you got to work it out. I'm so glad because that, that's something that helps me because, you know, in the past, sometimes I'd try to work out things for other people. Or, uh, you know, when I would talk to them about the Lord, I would try to, oh, I guess I was overstepping my bounds. You know, it's the Holy Spirit that convicts people. It's good to just let them make their conclusion, right? Just give them the Bible verse and let them make their conclusion. Right. You're right? I don't have to say, well, this religion's wrong, this religion's wrong. Oh, I've got to tell them. Here's what the Bible says. You make your own conclusion, right? Right. Well, I think we need to, and that's Philippians 2.12, work out, uh, therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. And then be filled with the Holy Spirit, Ephesians chapter 5, uh, verse 18. We need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Every day, you've got to work out, you know, what's God, what does God want to get out of this? And if we do that, I think we're going to have our, our void. I think we'll fill that void, and, and uh, we'll have that peace of Christ in our mind. We won't have to go to Las Vegas and, uh, with the high rollers, right? Right. And, and leave with our, in our underwear. And we don't want to be naked before the Lord when he comes back, do we? We need well, to be clothed. We will be naked before the Lord. He'll, yeah. see, he'll, he'll see all the way through us. He doesn't does. matter what you wear, he'll see it all. He's got x-ray eyes, doesn't mm-hmm. he? Right into the soul. Well, let's have a word of prayer. Rick, lead us. is there anything anybody wants to say? That was a true story in Las Vegas. The, the guy had pictures of the wreck. We, he, we took his word about <laughs> the guy's uh, apparel. Or lack thereof. Yeah. But, uh, Rick, lead us to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, we, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for the safe travels of everyone who's, who's here. Lord, we thank you for putting it in their hearts, Lord, to be here with us this day, to join us, to be uh, committed to uh, fellowshipping with the saints every Sunday, this first day of the week, Lord, and that they've made it. Lord, we ask you to watch over anybody else that's still on their way, or get them to arrive here safely, or... If it is too treacherous, Lord, protect them at home and keep guard their hearts, guard their minds, and be with them today and guide them in their actions as they're not willing, able to fellowship and hear your word here. And, Lord, we, we thank you for, for John and, and all of his instruction and how he's helped to bring me up and educate me and get me to hear your word. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to teach tonight, this morning. And, uh, Lord, we just ask that you bless everyone here and those that are absent this day and just be with us and and guard our hearts lord in jesus name we pray amen amen